right, we're back, and let's head over to Hong Kong and say hello to our friend and colleague, Yochi Shimatsu, for our weekly look at uh, Fukushima and the astounding impact it continues to have, unbeknownst to most of the so-called civilized world. Hello, Yochi. Welcome back. Hello. How are you? I'm still here, and you're still there, and that's good. So, well, we're, we're all still here, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Absolutely. All uh, right, well... Yes, spring and the the cherry blossoms again will be blooming here in another what six weeks something like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, March. Yeah, huh? That's right. Don't suppose there'll be a a big tourist push this season into Fukushima to well, visit the Well, the government is pushing tourism like crazy, and people are foolish enough to visit. Uh, my travel agent in Hong Kong told me that a lot of people have gone over only to Osaka, to the southern part of Honshu Island. And uh, one lady went over there. She was very careful about the diet and all that, but, you know, enjoyed Japanese food. She came back. She's about 26 years old, office worker. She came back. This is what my travel agent told me. Wasn't feeling very good. Stomach wasn't feeling too good. Her head was woozy. Went to the doctor, and the doctor told her, you can't have a baby for the next three years. That was his diagnosis. Well, that's a smart so in doctor. In other words, Japanese government are inviting people over there where they're eating the food, drinking the water, and mm-hmm. drinking the air, mm-hmm. and they're coming down with conditions where women, young women, cannot have babies for many well, years, and they're going to be under well, observation. If ever. So, they'll, they'll and my travel that. agent, has, she listens to me, and she says she's been warning people uh-huh. So they believe what they hear. She she listens to me because she realizes, you know, I've been at this environmental game a long time, been traveling all over Asia doing the work. She knows she knows I know what I'm talking about. She believes she tried to warn people, you shouldn't go, you shouldn't go. And they still go. So well, what can you do? You can't what do can anything. You, do? you just you say, uh, we've done our best, and that's all. Yeah, that's down, all down really in Thailand, do. I, I uh, had lunch with a young, uh, coffee with this young lady. She was uh-huh. like, rented a bicycle uh-huh. from a local bike shop. She says, I think this uh, it's a classic vintage old bike. I said, yeah, that's a Japanese police bike. And, she, and I said, I wonder where it's from. And there was a little tag on there. It was from Fukushima. Oh, man, they're but doing that bike. again. They're, they're yeah, selling so off everything they can. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, sitting on the seat of his bicycle. Uh, she won't have any kids either. Well, I'm just saying is that people just don't seem to understand what is going on, how large is it. And we are getting confirmation now of what I, I think I was the only person to really talk about was this huge event that happened in early January of this year, right? Correct. And now TEPCO, TEPCO is saying that they've lost a 600 liters of water, you know, it went somewhere, although that's very little. Actually. That's next to nothing. It went into the ocean. They uh-huh. said it went down some channel, some pipe, and then uh, we don't know what happened. It might have gone into the ocean, vast amount. And this is, of course, from the pool of Reactor 4, yeah. which uh, basically burned off and uh, caused havoc all around the world. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and some of that havoc, I know, you know, I think Americans aren't very familiar with what's going on, but Australians are. You see, they're on the receiving end of the harp system, okay? I just talked with a guy uh, down in Thailand. I just talked with him, an uh, Australian fellow. Um, he, he has written about the harp, well, like, uh, 1996. He started writing about that, researching it. Uh, people all over Australia, including himself, have heard these ethereal sounds in the woods. In places like large trees, yep. you get these harmonic vibrations. Mm-hmm. Then once he said that, he was in an all-wooden house, a house with wooden roof, walls, and floor. Right. And that thing was really vibrating like a speaker box, strange, spooky sound, same as you've been putting out there. That wood, as we know, is a natural amplifier. Yes. And it picks up sound from metal, vibrating metal, like your guitar, your piano, the sounding board of your piano, the box of your guitar, and so on. Uh, and that metal are the protons out of Fukushima that are, are caught up in the electromagnetic field. They, they sort of move around in large spirals from uh, north to south and bounce back. And if they're hit by, let's say, cosmic rays, but in this case, solar, you know, uh, you know solar bursts. Solar mm-hmm. flares. Solar flares. They sort of jangle, just like right. a guitar string or a piano uh, piano wire would. 
and this would be inaudible if you were in space. But down here on, you know, uh, as long as there's a little bit of air to transmit this vibration, it'll be picked up by the trees at the right angle, of course, in certain places, certain times. And you'll get, you call them these spooky, eerie sounds. Actually, what they are are ethereal sounds, ethereal music. That's a good noise. Ether. That's an interesting yeah, word. Yeah, ether because mm -hmm. it's the music of the spheres. You know, as early as the Book of Job, you know, in the Book of Job, they said that at the beginning of the universe, at the birth of the universe, the young stars were singing. Uh -huh. The astronomer Johannes Kepler in the 1600s uh, described this as the music of the spheres. He didn't quite have the right geometry. And he's a man, they make a lot of fun, you know, in science class, they just make a lot of fun Born Kepler for making these models of you know triangles and uh, the rectangles within them to try to describe it, but at the time they, you know it wasn't until let's say the uh, 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 early 1800s that the, you know uh, uh, Maxwell Faraday and so on, this uh, fellow uh, Orsted in the Sw uh, Sweden started the whole thing. They began to understand about electromagnetism, and finally with Max Planck, you know we got that understanding of quantum physics, subatomic particles. So of the five elements that the ancients used to talk about, you know, we had earth, uh, uh, air, fire, and water. They also had ether, and ether is electromagnetism, so it's the subatomic particles. That's what, so they were onto something very early on in old science, which new science didn't really get a grasp on until the 20th century. So that's what you're hearing, is basically... You know, the solar, the early electrons from the solar flares coming down, jangling the protons up in the atmosphere, and this then vibrates the air, and it's picked up by trees or wooden houses and so on, wooden structures, or vibrating, you know, any, you know, uh, let's say carbon structures here and there uh, around the world, and people hearing these ethereal sounds. Uh, I like that. So, so anyway, really so word. there you go. Yeah, it's yeah. very rare to hear something like this. But the fellow, people in Australia have heard it because Harp does pick it up, and they're on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. So he's mm -hmm. very, very, you know, this fellow is very familiar. Many people down in Australia know about this. Interesting. So, you know, they well, we, huh? we, yeah, so. Only so had now one, you're uh, getting in North America and Europe, you know, so it means, you know, all the electromagnetic fields from, you know, the three quarters of the Pacific, the United States across the Atlantic to Europe, all the way to Eastern Europe are all covered by highly charged electromag artificially charged electromagnetic fields, uh, probably for missile defense or the protection. Well that's what that's what HARP does and Eastland's patents of course yeah. talked about charging yeah. everything yeah. up so you could interfere with the guidance systems of incoming warheads yeah. and that's so right. And then must... your and then your chemtrails and all that, they're spraying metallic particles, okay? Mm -hmm. In a liquid solvent. Well the idea with the chemtrails is they're they're Turning the lower part of the atmosphere into a quasi plasma exactly. state, plasma state, so they can use that right. as well with HARP. Yeah, well, that is also a form of defense, but also it protects your communication system. So, wherever you see a lot of spraying going on, or maybe at nighttime by airships now, there's usually some sort of communi uh, satellite communication, you know, uh, antenna there, or major military or strategic related or nuclear weapons base or something like that, or a major lab, or electronic, uh, or I would say, a major phone uh, facility, okay? So that's, there's, there's intensively spraying there, because what they don't want is HARP, let's say, to short it out. If there is some sort of accident and overcharge, HARP could knock out their communication system. So they've got to protect their communication system from this monster HARP that they created. This plant well, there, there's more than one so, HARP-type facility, of course. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There are many, many. There's well, one in Alaska. There's one in Thule, Greenland, Thule Air Base, Greenland. Right. Eastern one Cyprus. One in Tonto, Norway. Yeah. One in, uh, uh, in, a couple in Russia. Yeah, uh huh. They're around. Now, uh, just one quick note on that leak at Reactor 4. Uh, yeah. Four, let's see. One, two, two, the, the latest is. Instead of 600 liters, it's 7,800 liters they're admitting oh, okay. to now. So they actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's more like in the uh, area. That's much more in the area. And By the way, that, wa that water, uh, so-called water purification or radiation re removing system over there, it turns out, yeah. is only removing cesium from the polluted water. Yeah. There apparently could be hundreds that's of right. other forms of radioactivity in it that it's not even that's touching. Right. Yeah. Many of them in the form of gas just bubbling right through. Yeah, uh, hot gas is bubbling right through the system. Yeah. 
I have to... dissolved in the water. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. cesium is like the older stuff that's decayed. Now cesium, a lot of it comes from uh, xenon 133 and xenon 131. Uh, that's a precursor of it. So uh, you know it escapes as gas. And now this xenon gas, in fact, is what moves so quickly across the uh, Arctic area, across Canada, the northern part of the United States, uh, through Greenland and into Scandinavia and Europe. Uh, that's the stuff that you saw in Trump's own Norway. Uh, and the photos of the uh, aurora borealis. Oh, the Northern Lights, northern yeah. Lights. Yeah, they, they're yeah, green. The green. Huge green blob in the sky. Well, that's mainly xenon, radioactive xenon from Fukushima up there that's really charging it because it's very, very huh. bright and blocked. Usually the Northern Lights are much dimmer. They're whitish, bluish white and all that. There's much less of a charge, but the xenon is radioactive. And there's some argon in the sky, you know, argon gas. These are things in ne neon bulbs, by the way, you know, the, the, the color neon bulbs. Because uh, neon itself is red, you know. Uh, these are normally white blue gases. But when they're very much charged, they're very much in the green spectrum. And that's what you're seeing. The xenon is like really charging it up. The argon up there, a little bit of ammonia up there. That's a huge amount of green that you seem like you've never seen before. And the bad news is that xenon has a half-life of five days, the xenon-131. Yeah, That's but what's what it thinking. break down Most to? Most of the xenon was burned off over Alaska and turned into cesium. But it turns into cesium, radioactive cesium, mm. which has a much longer shelf life. And if it's hit by, let's say, some electrons up in the sky, it'll come down and fall out. So that's what we saw uh, with the spectacular.